Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. Project manager sends 600 plus remittances to prove 80 unpaid invoices were actually paid, returned, or duplicates. The second story. I got fined for ridiculous things by my HOA and got ticked off and decided to get onto the board. I then spent a year removing all members of the board I joined and replacing them. The third story. Young adults attempt to cause car accident, threaten to blame it on me to police. I seek revenge. The first story is Petty Revenge Against Corporate Finance Department. So I work as a project manager for a small social business. We assist vulnerable people to obtain items they need. There's a large organization and we use one of their small trading arms to purchase and deliver items to the vulnerable people we work with. We receive invoices from their large corporate finance department for payment. As project manager, part of my role includes checking all these invoices, making sure they match the order we sent out, and setting up the schedule so that our finance officer can make the payments. You can guarantee in a batch of invoices there will be multiple mistakes, and I have to send them back to be corrected. I keep meticulous notes. I know what has been paid, what hasn't, and why. This week I received an email with a zip file attached with 80 invoices inside, and a rather abrupt email stating, These invoices have not been paid. Make payment within 7 days and forward remittance advice to avoid further action. Well that peeved me off for starters. There was absolutely no way we had not paid 80 invoices. So doing my due diligence, I checked every single one just to be sure we hadn't missed any of them. It took me all afternoon, which peeved me off more because I had other work to do. This was obviously due to them not doing data input and proper checks they needed to at their end. Out of 80 invoices, not one single one had been unpaid due to any issue on our end. I could have been nice and helpful. I could have pulled off just the information they required, but instead I chose petty revenge. I asked my finance officer to pull off remittances for all invoices from them since April 1st, 2022. Talking 600 plus list. Bear in mind it doesn't list in invoice number order. Dear corporate, please be advised of the 80 invoices you've demanded payment for. Minus 59 have been received and already paid. Minus 5 are not invoices intended for our company. Minus 11 are ones we've returned for corrections and not received back. Please check previous emails. Minus 5 are duplicates which have been paid under different invoice numbers. Please ensure all relevant checks are completed before contacting us in the future. We are a small organization and do not have the capacity to investigate invoices we have received, processed, and paid correctly. I attached the 600 plus list of remittances on a PDF so they couldn't copy and sort and sent the email. Now I could have been nice and sent them the document I had worked on, telling them specifically which invoices had been paid, which ones had been returned for corrections, and which ones were not ours. But they don't pay me and I'm not doing their work for them. The pleasure I got from knowing they would have to actually do the same, if not more work than I had done, searching through the zip file and remittance list, finding the 80 invoices, checking emails, checking for duplicates, well it was immense and very petty of me. The next story is How I Gutted My HOA This is the story of how I completely changed out my community's HOA board and foreclosed on one of their houses after they disrespected me. Backstory A few years ago I bought my first house in a medium size, 500 to 1000 homes neighborhood in a southern state. It had an HOA, but I actually picked the neighborhood because they had the lowest HOA dues in the city, the fewest rules, and the house was by far the nicest one I could afford in my budget. After a few weeks I get a violation notice from the HOA, telling me that I had two violations needing correction. My lawn was not green enough. My trash cans were too close to my driveway. I was thoroughly confused about number one, as it was February, in the middle of winter. So of course my lawn was dead, like pretty much everyone else's, so I had assumed that either this was a mistake or an existing offense from the previous owner. As for the trash cans, I kept them on the side of my house, and I think when the HOA came by, my trash cans stuck out past the side wall, about one foot, so how dare I? I shrugged them off and continued on. Come March I got another notice, this time fining me for both violations. Each one cost me $100 and they wanted the money in two weeks. I was peeved. This has made no sense and I was not about to let them just try and get money for BS violations. So I called the management company that worked with the board to get them appealed. The lady told me that I needed to appeal directly to the board and that I could do so in the next annual meeting in a few days. So I of course showed up to the meeting. Prior to it starting, I met with a few homeowners and learned that they were all there for similar BS violations and were peeved off too. 
I then talked with one of the members of the board about the fine appeals process. He was an older guy in his 70s with short gray hair and a very worn and angry face. He asked what I was getting fined for, and when I told him he just looked at me and said, and you should get fined for that. Young people like you not taking care of their homes is the whole reason I got on this board. Learn to be a better property owner. This dude was the VP of a volunteer board telling me that I did not know how to take care of my house. What a sad life. The meeting then started and the moderator mentioned that since this was an annual meeting, we would be voting on three out of five board members. They had some applicants to the board, and we could also nominate someone today. That's when I had the idea of how I could get my revenge. When the election part of the meeting came, I nominated myself, gave some BS speech about HOAs are not here to make money, and that I want to serve my community. I won in a landslide, and you could see the board members getting annoyed because they had scowled during my speech. After the meeting, I appealed my violations, in a very elegant way, and they agreed to waive my trash can violation. As for the grass one, apparently since I had weeds growing in my yard, like tiny patch in the corner, they were still fining me because the weeds were turning yellow after I sprayed them. I was dumbfounded how they could get away with this, but they used a technicality in the bylaws that I had signed, so I ended up losing $100. Revenge. I'll be honest, I had not expected this to work. After joining the board, of five, including myself, I was appointed secretary and had to help maintain meeting notes and review records. They specifically told me that I was not allowed to propose new policies, but I could vote on new ones proposed by the VP or president, which I later learned was actually a violation of their own rules. I voted every new rule down as long as I was in that position. I decided that my best course of action was to listen to how the others operated, and look for an opening to get each of them off the board. The first opening came when the president, who literally looked like the most Karen woman ever, mentioned that she had wanted to find for flowers that were not neutral color. Basically, if a homeowner wanted to add something like turquoise flowers, we would find them. She apparently had a neighbor that had flowers that she didn't like, and she wanted to use the board to stop them. It was pretty insane. I then started my revenge on her. I started a message thread, on Slack since that's how we communicated, with the other board members, and asked what they had thought about her policy and reasoning. After far too much deliberation, two of them honestly thought that this was okay. We agreed that the policy went too far. I then made a long post in the main channel telling her that her actions were not only wrong, but that she should be excused from the board. When she inevitably flipped out, I called a board meeting in the following week, and the other four board members voted her off for targeting a community member for personal gain. She gave a sob story about how the board was her life, and that the neighborhood was like her child, but I didn't care. That was one down. I convinced one of my good neighbor friends to join a little later on to take her spot. The next members I targeted were the treasurer and director, as I wanted to save the VP for last. They were actually pretty easy to get off the board, because they were very easily swayed by public opinion. So I made a fake account on next door and waited until spring, when most of the violations go out. When the letters went out, I looked for angry posts on next door. I then would comment on each one, giving them the first names of the two board members as the culprits and told them to come to the next HOA meeting to appeal. It worked far better than I had expected. During the next meeting, over 50 people showed up and called out those by name. It was glorious. During the open session, community members grilled those two for their poor policies, even though they did not make most of them. The VP, now president after the other one resigned, tried to defend them, but ultimately failed. The two members were so distraught after the meeting, and I told them that maybe they should resign, and they both did. That was two more down both of which were replaced by a couple who came to the same meeting and wanted to get rid of these rules. Finally, the board had been flipped to four out of five people wanting to get rid of all these dumb rules. The president, however, was still same old angry, hateful man. He tried to add more rules to increase violation revenue, and we voted him down every time. He started to get annoyed, but stayed steadfast to the board. I tried a lot of tactics to get him to leave, and not much swayed him. A few months went by and we started with a new management company. They had a much better style of property management and a website for looking through our community's records, as well as automated reports. When we got our first fines report, I hit pay dirt. The president's house appeared, and he owed around $10,000. Apparently, he had opened violations that he had never paid. And the other management company hid it from the board for him, since he had been on the board for close to seven years. So I looked into remedies. Since his fines were over $3,000, our bylaws stated that a majority vote of the board could start an HOA foreclosure on the home which I still think is insane that HOAs can do that. So I got all the docs together and double-checked with the new management company that the fines were correct, which they confirmed. I called an emergency board session, presented the information, and four out of five of us voted to start the foreclosure process. 
The president got angry, cursed, and left the meeting early. We were informed a few days later that the president had resigned, paid his fine, and put his house up for sale. While I'm sad we couldn't force a foreclosure, at least he was off the board. I am currently president to this day, and I've reduced the fining policy to be a maximum of $400, and homeowners can appeal any time that they wish digitally. In addition, I've banned any grass fines until May, and trash can violations have been super relaxed. Moral of the story? Never fine me $200, call me a stupid young kid, and expect to not lose your house. Edit. Not many people at HOAs are generally beholden to city compliance and code enforcement. If you can get code on your side, your HOA is powerless. The last story is, kids repeatedly try to cause car accident and tell me they're going to tell the police it's my fault. Let me start by saying the kids had to be in their late teens or early 20s. Two of them had tattoos. Not children, but young adults that still act like kids. I, 32 female, work at a barricade company. Easiest way to describe it, I'm the one that closes down the traffic lanes and makes you late to stuff. This happened two days ago and I hope my revenge was petty enough, but here you are. I had a lane closure that I needed to take off the road. I'm about halfway down when I get a city bus stop with two guys and a girl. They asked me if I could give them a ride so they don't have to take the bus. I said, sorry guys, I can't, I'm working, and continued to take the lane closure down. The girl stood up and told me, I effing hate rude, ugly C's. I reply, congratulations and keep doing my job. They keep yelling insults. I ignore them. When I was about 300 feet away, the yelling stops, and I see the guys had gotten up and started throwing the barricades in the street into the lane that's now open for traffic to drive in. I run over and take them out of the road and explain to them that if they did it again, I would call the cops. Then the girl chimed in, go ahead, B. It's not our fault you're so stupid you're forgetting to take them all down. I walk away, they do it again. I called the cops and they said that they would be there ASAP. In my experience, that means about an hour. So I walk over and tell them I called the cops and stand there so they can't move them again. After about five minutes standing there, the boys told the girl they were going to go get a drink from the Circle K the bus stop was in front of. They left and she would not look at anything but her phone. Now I'm annoyed. I still have more work to do and this lane closure is still up and it's approaching rush hour. And I decided F these kids. I pulled out my pepper spray and I sprayed the handles of the barricades that they kept throwing in the street and walked about 50 feet away and waiting. The boys came out of the store, put their bags down and grabbed a barricade in each and threw them in the street. But the handles were wet so they only went on the shoulders so I didn't go to move them immediately. I saw they wiped their hands off on their pants, but because of the bus stop, I couldn't see everything but about a minute later one of the boys got up and ran into the Circle K with his hand over his eye and then ran in there a second later too, though nothing seemed to be bothering him. About 10 minutes later when they came out of the store, the cops were just showing up and they both took off sprinting down the street and totally bailed on the girl. I talked to the cops and told them the boys ran off and the girl never touched a barricade so they were good to go. The girl was crying because her boyfriend left her there. I hope you love these stories. Subscribe, hit the like button and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching and have a good day.